So here we go again. It's time for another simage, a symbiosis a simness. And we've got Bingo, the penguin, <laughs> penguin man. He's coming around to say, oh, isn't he so cute? Oh, lovely. Look at him go. And you should hear the noises he was making as he was there. He was going, meh, meh. Um, try and pet the little penguin uh, before he escapes. Ah, no, he's gone. Oh, well, never mind. So we've got Cassidy and she's, oh, oh, did you see that? Did you see what just happened then? Oh my god, I wonder whose child that's going to be. The pregnancy moving on sharpish here. We're flying through there. She's going to be giving birth within the hour. So we've got the uh, witch doctor here, Elpin, death child, death baby, grow up. Oh, and oh, look at that. Speedy, speedy, speedy. So we're going to have another baby on the way. Now, who do you think the father is this time? Who do you think the father is? Let's find out. Let's just wait for this birth to occur. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Look at that bed. Look at the, another birth in the death chamber. Something so poetic about that, isn't there? A birth in the death chamber. So here we go. And glorious. Let's see. There we go. It looks normal. Born with a nappy on. That's good. All perfectly normal. And let's see who the father is. We've got baby three, the third baby to be born in this house. And, oh, it's Death Baby. Death Baby is the father. So the Grim Reaper is actually the grandfather of this child. So that's okay. So we've got baby three and Cassidy. Uh, Death Baby there, the father of baby three. And there we go. Lovely. So let's just put baby three down on the floor there. Let's see if we can get Cassidy a little bit of comfort in the Reaper's throne. Uh, that's the Grim Reaper's throne there. Superb. She can't really get her playing this pinball. Uh, I might get rid of that later. It's not going down too well. She's she always seems too tired. We'll get her back in there. So baby three's in the cart and she's in bed. Good. That might be the last. So let's go and see upstairs now. There's a third floor being added. Isn't this looking delightful? Look at this. <laughs> it's looking really, really uh, friendly. We've got a nice, lovely little balcony there with the candles. Isn't that gorgeous? The go <laughs> so let's get the witch doctor out on the uh, the Reaper's balcony. Look at that. Superb. What a house this has turned out to be, guys. What a house. Got a fridge there outside. Look at the trees doing well. We've got the giant stone heads looking upon it. We've got the outdoor piano and spin thing. Ah, oh, superb. What, are you, this is an absolute evolution. You can see the pit of the abyss there, there at the bottom uh, corner of the house there out in the fields. That, that, that goes as far down as, as possible. And it actually gains access to the other, the other realm. Um, so that's how death appears on Earth through the, uh, the pit of abyss. See uh, Witch Doctor performing a little bit of voodoo magic on Cassidy here to make her in love with him. So hopefully this should work out as a nice little... No, she's not interested, even with voodoo magic. She can't be convinced. There's definitely something. So as punishment, uh, he's made her really need the loo. <laughs> he's a, quite a vindictive soul, isn't he? Let's see if we can get them chatting away here a little bit, just to get them uh, a bit more together because it wouldn't be nice actually there's lots of babies in this house and obviously she's had one now wouldn't it be nice to have a nice stable family for them to to help bring up these children let's, let's see let's give her a little romantic kiss here no he's getting in bed oh she's watching him sleep i like how uh, a tan line very much stops uh, from the neck down have a little glance outside now so there's the trees got glorious trees the piano, the outdoor piano. Let's hope it doesn't rain. We wouldn't want that to uh, get damaged, would we? Uh, see if we can get a... I need to get this fun up. So hopefully on this futuristic spinning device that just launched around. She's dizzy now. Okay, that, that did increase her fun a little bit. Uh, we get Cassidy up. She's going to phone the police. Yes, she's going to phone the police. Because... Uh, maybe she'd be able to, if she phones down the police as an emergency, she can 
have a little flirt and maybe that's one way to get a fella although he just seems to be telling her off for calling when there wasn't an emergency yeah no she he, he's not he's not very happy with that actually there <laughs> there's zog crawling around on the floor looking great do you like the new painting do you like the new artwork on the wall it looks great doesn't it what about the decor guys i haven't really mentioned this yet have i uh they've got the nice green wallpaper there and we see we've ordered some pizza in here. Looking good. Get to grab some of that pizza. Zog there. Still crawling around. Not really much we can do with Zog at the moment. I tried interacting with him. Tried to feed him. Uh, but it's just not happening. So we've ordered some groceries in as well. And uh, they really are disgusting eaters, these two. Uh, can you see there? Look at the, the colour of her face. Very much kind of brown. And then uh, everything else very much white. I don't know quite what's going on there. <laughs> she, I think she just tans her face. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so another opportunity to look at the outside again. We've got the trees, got this little decking area and a desk, of course. And uh, a nice little recliner there, which... Uh, oh, no, oh, there was uh, baby number three just left on the floor there. Um, very resilient children, as always, <laughs> because so we can see. Uh, there's the pit of the abyss there. Hopefully you see it, just uh, the bottom right there. Uh, hopefully we don't go. I wonder what happens if you make them go there. I might have to try that next episode. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, leave, uh, leave four likes if you would like to see uh, a baby fall down the pit of abyss. So we're visiting the Wise O's now, uh, crossing over, the fire still burning. Uh, Tommy's practicing his acting skills outside. He's uh, currently working on some of his more comedic characters, uh, along with his good friend, Dr. Shvivel. And uh, here we go. So he's gonna just going to pretend to be a chicken here. So there we go. Actually, these acting classes are really working out well, I think, for him. That's, that's actually a pretty good interpretation of a chicken. Yeah, he's made up. He's pleased. Yeah. That's it. I think back to everyday life now. Um, <laughs> his drama teacher there can go home. So uh, we've got a, a pizza coming. Wonderful. Another pizza. Just what we need. Get, make sure cat's fed. Got this gentleman that's come around again. I don't know what he's like. Hopefully we'll get to interact. Is he interacting with the cat? Do, do you look after that cat? I swear to God, if you do anything to that cat... Hopefully we get Lisa and Tommy back on good terms again this episode. That'd be really nice, wouldn't it? Get them back as a couple. The pizza guy choosing the, the back door for some reason. And he's leaving the pizza there on the deck in. <laughs> okay, fine. Philip coming in to grab a slice. He's still wearing his little rubber ring there. That seems to be a bit of a permanent feature of Philip. Obviously in honour of his father, Lion Boy. Just keeping an interesting little... Uh, Baby there, that's <laughs> Philip, Philip Jr. Um, appears to <laughs> appears to just be a void. <laughs> Philip Jr. <laughs> it's just a void. He's just anti-baby. <laughs> you know, um, a thing to mention actually: uh, the cat has a job, <laughs> so that's good. He's earning the money. Uh, Tommy's also got a job. And uh, so they'll, <laughs> Tommy and Cats will be going off to work later on, providing for the family. <laughs> There's Nine Head and this new uh, gentleman that's just come round. I've still not really got to know him too well just yet. <laughs> Nine Head seems to be enjoying that pizza a little bit too much there, do you not think? She just looks a little bit too into that, to be honest. Right, so, oh, when she's falling asleep. She's on the floor. <laughs> she, oh, she just passed out. She's fine. Philip there, tucking in. <laughs> Philip wearing some very distinctive uh, <laughs> garments there. <laughs> Dressed up as what I can only describe as Lancastrian. <laughs> there he is, looking good. Oh, yeah. That's not great. Oh, got the gang together anyway. Um, just uh, nine heads come to join. <laughs> he seems to be getting angry about something there. This pizza really bringing people together. Okay, so we're getting to grips with this new guy. Uh, his level of character, he's just arguing. He's complaining about something. Tommy looking ripped there. The gym's working out for him, I suppose. 
So I'm just watching the football game and oh, what an absolute fricker. What a total loser. Oh my God. Come on, Tommy. You're going to stand for that? Just come in and stand it in front of you just like that? No, let's try and block him in with some chairs. Get that TV off. No, won't be having any of that. Yeah, serves you right. Scoundrel. Oh, and he's just got out. Okay. Well, <laughs> Tommy's finally resumed a bit of TV. Uh, we've installed a new couch because we're realising they were all standing to watch the TV um, because it wasn't a good angle. So we've got this wonderful uh, little feature set there. <laughs> we've got Lisa. She's choosing to stand, of course. No space. Philip's back. Philip's back. And Philip's going again. <laughs> oh, Tommy. Tommy and Lisa. Hey, they're getting on Lisa's loving life. Look at this. Oh, she's a lampshade. Oh, that is a great little bit of uh, like great a bit of marketing for yourself there towards Tommy. Tommy's going to love that. He's going to think it's a fine. So Tommy's ready to go to work. Um, Tommy also has the flu. The flu seems to be going around this house at the moment for some reason. And we've got the two ladies here ready to send Tommy off. Tommy going to work there. Don't know what line of work that is. Is, is he an ambulance driver? Is he a paramedic maybe? Oh, it's, it's quite an honourable trade there it's for him to be getting involved with. Well done, Tommy. And Kat's also going to work soon. Nine head death healthy again. Wonderful. Glad she's better, though she's spread it around the rest of the family, which is annoying. Nine head's writing a little novel here. Huh? She's got a lot of ideas in that big skull of hers, so she's just getting them down on the computer, which would be great to see. And Kat's off to work now. Kat's at work. Brilliant. And so now it's just time to decide what we're going to do with this guy. As you can see, I blocked him in, got rid of the doors. So, uh, yeah, oh, God, I hate him. I hate him so much. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's not going to end too well for this guy. So leave in the comments what you think I should do with him. I've got some ideas myself, mind. Hmm...